Hi everybody, this is John Kramer, the host of the At The IP Show on Blog Talk Radio. I've got an exciting video review here of Sky Safari for Android. That's right, those of you who have been fortunate enough to have Sky Safari for iPad and iPhone, well, now for those Android individuals, we're lucky enough to have this fantastic product. And I'll go ahead and touch base on a few of the interesting features of this program. Now you see here this is a graphical representation of the sky map. Beautiful, beautiful sky rendition as you can see and typical to most applications on Android tablets you have the pinch to zoom and that's basically what I'm doing right here. Pinching in, zooming, uh, zooming a little bit here of course I'll show you here in a moment how much farther we can zoom in on the product but it's a beautiful rendition of the night sky here uh, from a graphical standpoint really really did a nice job now there's three versions of this sky safari here as I continue to kinda of play around and just show you how smooth it moves here sky safari starts out for $299 and it's a 50 megabyte file with 120,000 stars on it no telescope control though sky safari plus which is the version that I'm running here is a 1499 product with 180 megabytes and 2.5 million stars with telescope control. Now let me go ahead as I'm pinching into zoom here look at how much detail you have here. I'm looking at Jupiter you can see some double stars there and look at that it includes the separation there 1.8. Also of course has double deep sky objects M74 there is in the field of view and I'm gonna look for a little bit further at Jupiter and look at that look at all of the deep sky objects that are coming into field of view here as you're zooming in I'm gonna take an even further look at Jupiter now these deep sky objects of course are beyond the you know range of most amateur scopes but they're down to 15.5 magnitude here and I'm looking at more Jupiter here and you can see now as I zoom in further you got the moons coming in Ganymede, Callisto, Io and Europa now here's something really neat as we zoom in even further on Jupiter look at the graphical representation of Jupiter you notice how that great red spot is there well that is exactly where the great red spot is if you were looking at Jupiter through the eyepiece of the telescope that's right it links exactly to the great red spot transit times it also will work with you know transits of the moon as well as shadow transits too very very nice now that red uh, rings here that you see well that's a Telrad finder chart uh, or finder lay, uh, overlay and the blue is a finder um, field of view. Now it has a night vision mode there which I just pressed but for the purpose of this demo uh, that way you, you know keep your night vision which is great. For the purpose of this demo we'll keep it in the normal mode here and let's go ahead and look at another feature here. Check out the spiral galaxy. I selected that spiral galaxy, hit the information, and look at the wealth of information that you have available. You can also, right there at the bottom, add to your observing list. Now I have my favorites and I've created one, also 1225, and that's it. Now that galaxy is added to my observing list. Pretty cool. Now if you hit center, well, that's right there in the center of your eyepiece there now or field of view. Now let's look at some other options under the search screen. Look at all of this information. Tonight's best comets, satellites, nearby stars, bright stars, double stars, deep sky objects, Messier objects. Check out these double stars here. The ones that are in a brighter gray are ones that are visible and darker gray are currently not visible. So I've selected 56 Andromeda. Look at the wealth of information there that you have. If you click on description, it also has a descriptive field. Depending upon what object you're viewing, depends upon how descriptive it is, but great information there. Lots of fun to read that while you're at the eyepiece. If you hit center, there's that star in the finder field of view and the Telrad reticle for you to go ahead and star hop to. I'll zoom out there. Let's go back into the search. Let's look at some other, you know, you got your Messier, you got your deep sky objects here, you got interesting star asterisms, and of course your observing reports or observing lists rather on the bottom. Now this is your Messier list 
Uh, again, grayed out is not viewable, brighter available objects right there for you. Let's take a look at your deep sky. Deep sky includes a wealth of objects, NGC, Messier, uh, even uh, you know non-catalog, standard catalog objects. So just a fantastic, fantastic amount of information here for for you to go ahead and select. You can also go ahead and look at your observing list. Here's a few objects that I've added to my 1225 observing list. And if I choose one of those, I can call up information if I want. As you can see, I can delete that or email it, which is pretty nice too email it perhaps you want to go ahead and keep track of what you're viewing. Now if I wanted to search for M79 just put it right there in the search field calls up the information page here. Now I can go ahead and also choose description or center it. This is a M79 now centered in the Telrad or my finder field of view. Now here's a few of the settings that you have available. I won't go through all of them, but you know basically it controls how the the um, the program will render objects. You know what type of grid overlay you had. Of course, your location is very important to input accurately. And oops, let me get back here. And uh, just the wealth of information there for this product. Uh, fantastic. I don't have a telescope, then I can test the telescope control. I don't have a compatible telescope, I should say. So I won't be able to test that out, but uh, it's really, really great. Let's go to M41 here. Go to description. Now this has a wealth of information here on M41. As you can see, I, I love reading this while I'm at the eyepiece. It's really good. And of course, there's, a gra there's an image right there for M41 too. If I go ahead and center that, I can go ahead and hop right to it as well with the included Telrad or my finder chart there. Oop, let me back that out again. And you can see all the stars there. If they're double stars, they'll have the separation angle. So if you're a double star enthusiast, you're going to really appreciate that. Now it doesn't, um, well, it does rather give you some accurate depictions of what you'll see at the eyepiece. Of course, you need to pinch to zoom in pretty tight for that, but I love the uh, wealth of information that it has in here. Uh, the search function is great. If you are, are not a computer-controlled telescope owner, the fantastic feature is tonight's best. You can go ahead and just work your way through that list uh, for your particular date and time. Um, Jupiter, like I said, it shows you accurate depictions of great red spot so that you can accurately compare that view to yourself at the eyepiece. And uh, what a fantastic program, plus it's beautiful to look at. Runs pretty smooth on my Android 2.3 or 2.2. Uh, version it is. Now they do have a Sky Safari Pro for $59.99 you get 417 megabytes and 15 million stars. So three versions depending upon your liking. And that's it. That is our review.